Hello, Mr. Colehat. Mrs. Riley. It's going to give him another minute to get participants signed on. Sure. Mrs. Hokinson, Mrs. Bryan, nice to see you. You want to start off, Mrs. Riley, or need to start? Yeah, go ahead and get started, and then I'll just say a few words. All right, sounds good. All right, good afternoon, everybody, to the Edinburgh Kindergarten Academy. This is our virtual town hall. Um, now, the majority of the information that you're going to see today is for those of those of us who are planning on coming back in person in October. But if you're an iSync or iCyber parent, um, a lot of information today will it will also pertain to you but there will also be other times um, that were sent out to you if you are a virtual um, iSync or iCyber parent um, that there are this uh, Thursday September 10th there are a few dates for those virtual town halls that you might want to jump on for those as well we do have a question and answer in your if you see where questions and answers are on your Zoom down at the bottom, we are going to be answering questions as they come. However, if it gets to a point where there's there's a lot of questions, either way, we're going to do an FAQ. So after today, um, you will have a list of frequently asked questions um, that were brought up in today's meeting. This meeting is also being recorded, so if you want to see, see this at a later time or if you know, if your husband or your spouse or, you know, if they're not home right now or if they're not able to watch it, um, you will be able to watch this at a later time. All right. Mr. Colehup, is that okay if I say a few Go words? Go ahead. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Bernadette Riley. I'm the superintendent of schools. Uh, this is the kickoff for the first of our uh, town halls. These will be happening in each of the schools. Um, if you are new to Interborough and this is your first time having a child in our school, welcome. Um, we, even under these circumstances, uh, we know that it's going to be a wonderful year for your children. We're excited to have them back. You're very much in good hands, um, not only with these three amazing educators in front of you, but all of the staff here at the Kindergarten Academy. Um, I had the privilege of being the principal here at the kindergarten for about six years before I moved into central administration. And um, it is a wonderful and amazing time for your children. We, this is not ideal. Um, this is not the way we want to see um, education for our students, but under these circumstances, you know, we want to make sure that everyone is safe um, and feels safe coming back to school. So even though we are starting the year virtually, we are planning and hoping for your children to be back here, um, hopefully by the first week of October. If we can manage a little bit earlier, we'll do our best to do that. But right now, the date that we are striving for is October 5th. We work very closely with the Chester County Health Department um, and they will work with us um, to determine whether that date is the date that we are sticking to. So I just wanted to come on and introduce myself to you and thank you all for being here. And I look forward to meeting you all in person at some point over the kindergarten year when we get back and hopefully 
things will um, ease up a little bit and we'll have that opportunity to get to know each and every one of you in person. So with that, I'll leave you to the meeting. Thank you so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you, Mr. Colhet, Mrs. Hokins, Ms. Brian for participating today. I know Mr. Colhep appreciates it and so do I very much. Okay, thanks you, thank you all. Thank you. Bye. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here, so bear with me. Okay, so since a lot of you, this is your first time through the Nimbaro School District, this is the greatest time, it's the greatest school. It's obviously under different circumstances, but we're gonna make whatever's dealt with us, um, your kindergarten year is gonna be phenomenal. What I want you to know is this, okay? The main presentation for today are things to set you up for virtual learning, all right? So I'm not gonna talk a lot about what it's gonna look like October 5th. Um, that, the goal of that is gonna be, once we get closer, and Superintendent Riley and the school board agrees that we're back in person, you will receive, you know, we're either gonna do another town hall like this, but I, there'll be a lot more information as far as what it will look like in person. The goal of today's meeting is more or less, you know, my child starts school September 17th. What is September 17th until that first week in October? What is it gonna look like? Now, a lot of the things that we talk about today will carry over to when we're in person, brick and mortar, um, but I want you to know that the focus, the main focus for today is that so we have a smooth start into the school year. But like I said, once that we get that go ahead to come in in person, that's where we're going to talk more. And, you know, I'm not going to really get into it today much, but what will mask breaks look like for our child? Like much, I don't know if my child is going to wear a mask. Do not worry about your child wearing a mask. I will say that right now. Okay. Your child is going to have plenty of times. We already have mask breaks kind of worked into the schedule. Where, where they will be able to take them off at times throughout the day. We understand that it's hard for adults, let alone five-year-olds, to have a mask on all day. So all that will be sorted out um, and the schedule will be coming out. So things such as that, um, you know, as far as what's going to look like here, as far as, you know, bathroom use, will be a schedule. But a lot of those in-person things, I'd rather push off for now, and I'd rather just focus on this, the start of the school year. Not to say you can't ask, ask those questions, you know, if they are pressing, but at this time, I kind of just want to focus on what the virtual learning for your child will look like um, until we go back to brick and mortar. Now, if you're an iSync or iCyber parent, like I said, that is fine too. A lot of the things today will carry over um, to your programming as well. All right, so welcome to the Kindergarten Academy. Now, normally you'd be in our extremely cold air conditioned cafeteria, but instead you're in your comfort of your own home. So again, I am Brad Colab. I'm the principal of the Interborough Kindergarten Academy. Um, with me today is our school count or school counselor, Ms. Brian. Other parts of our staff, our kindergarten academy school nurse is Mrs. Cambies and Ms. Razzi. We share them with Glenn Olden. So if you have any children at Glenn Olden, they may be familiar faces. Our social worker is Ms. Catherine McCullen, who she'll be working with different families throughout the year. And if you've ever been to the Kindergarten Academy, it wouldn't run without our wonderful office assistants, Adri Ms. Adrian Clemson and Ms. Diana Conley. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, this is my start of my ninth year in Interboro. Um, prior to coming to the Kindergarten Academy three years ago as principal, I was the assistant principal of Glen Olden School within, um, obviously, the district. So I'm extremely excited to be here at the KA. I'm looking forward to the start of my fourth year at a, it truly is a wonderful community. And those of you who have been here before, I know that we can test to that. Might be a little bit uncertain times right now, as we always hear in the news all the time, but please know that we're gonna make it the best experience possible for your child. Okay, so on Friday, excuse me, on Friday, there were class lists um, were sent out. If you did not receive them, you do not have to put anything in the question and answer box. I ask that you actually call the school or shoot me an email and we can go ahead and try to troubleshoot that. Due to the district being departmental this year, okay, and this is for all, this is for every elementary class, except there's a few outliers, which I'll talk about in a little bit. If your child has, if they got their sheet saying who their homeroom teacher is, if their teacher is Ms. Joanne Mullen, Mrs. Regino, 
Ms. Hazard or Mr. Tim McElhenney. Okay. These are, this is a one of our team. Okay. This is one of our teams. Um, if they have Miss Mullen, let's say, as I mentioned in the, in the paper that went home, Miss Mullen will be the homeroom teacher and ELA teacher. Kids will stay in their classrooms all day. Okay. Except for special ed, but I'll get into that in a little bit. So if a kid's in Miss Mullen's class, they'll have ELA taught to them. Then Mrs. Regino comes upstairs. She'll teach math to them. Ms. Hazard will come over, teach OG Orton Gillingham, which we'll get into later, um, slash phonics with them. And then Mr. Tim McElhenney, our PE health teacher, will be there as well, get providing PE and health instruction. Um, what does PE and health look like? It's going to look a little bit different this year. Um, we do have the field open at Prospect Park. We kind of cut that in half. So there will be plenty of, plenty of opportunities for outdoor activity. Um, and the PE team here at Interboro, K through pre-K through 12, is working on coming up with games um, you know, that, that are right, that kind of adhere to the social distancing guidelines that we are trying to follow, that we are following. Um, I want to go into a sample schedule in a little bit, but this would be the one team. Now, will they have PE health all year? No. Okay. Mr. Mack, let's say they'll have PE first marking period. Maybe they'll have music second marking period. And then the third and fourth marking periods is where we're going to start implementing some STEM, some science, some guidance, among other things. Now, science and guidance and library, that's kind of going to be interspersed throughout the school year. But just know that your child will receive all the specialists that they normally would. Team two is Mrs. Nicole Young, Ms. Kim King, Ms. Ke Ms. Kelly Spiata doing OG Orton Gillingham and Phonics, and Mrs. Dina Killian is the music teacher. Ms. Liz Weber will be teaching one classroom of kindergarten students. She will teach her own homeroom, all subjects throughout the day. Again, other than, so Ms. Young, Ms. King, Ms. Spiata, Ms. Killian, um, those teachers will rotate through your child's classroom. And again, Specialists will rotate each marking period among the students. Our support staff. If your child has come, is coming up through early intervention, you have already met with myself and the special education team. You will be receiving more information in the coming days about what special education will look like in a virtual manner. Uh, Ms. Victoria Domingo Woodfield is our autistic support slash special education teacher. Ms. Caitlin Johnson is another one of our special education teachers. This year, we have Mrs. Tara Doherty. She is our reading specialist. Now, Mrs. Doherty's schedule will vary throughout the year. Um, however, know that the reading specialist will be engaged with every single solitary student in the school um, in some capacity, at least in the first couple months, okay? Mrs. Noelle Hokinson, who's with us today, she, in the beginning of the year, will be your tech support, Schoology support. Um, and then she's also a STEM library and science teacher throughout the year. Ms. Maggie McManus is our speech therapist. If you have a child coming up through early intervention, you've already met Ms. McManus. Or if you have any speech concerns that you may have, um, she'd be somebody to reach out to throughout the year. I will let you know that every child entering the Kindergarten Academy will be screened for speech, be it virtually or back when we're in person. So do know that. And Dr. Amanda Amidon is our school psychologist as well who performs the majority of our psychoeducational testing here at the KN. So this year is a little bit different, as you know, at the Kindergarten Academy. So those of you who live in Norwood or Tinicum, you will be going to your community schools. Luckily, they're in good hands. Uh, they're being, um, our traditional Kindergarten Academy teachers will be there, be there teaching kindergarten. So you do not have to worry about, you know, maybe somebody who's not a kindergarten season teacher before, or somebody, you know, maybe you really love the Kindergarten Academy and you're hoping that a lot doesn't change once they're back in person, okay, that's not going to be the case. We have three veteran teachers who will do a wonderful job with your child. Ms. Krista, Ms. Krista Cesarine and Mrs. Emily Grants will be at Norwood. Ms. Cesarine will teach both classes ELA. Mrs. Emily Grants will teach both classes math. And then they will both teach their own Orton-Gillingham slash phonological awareness to their homeroom. To their home. Tinicum is kind of in a different boat because there's only one kindergarten teacher um, who will be at Tinicum. That's Mrs. Jess Lennox, and she will be self-contained there throughout the day. Kindergarten students in Orton and Tinicum will have specialists 
from their school. So if the PE teacher, the science teacher, the library, I'm sorry, the STEM teacher, the librarian, um, the, the music teacher from those schools will be teaching kindergarten um, at New Orleans and at Tinicum, just so you know. So we do not have traveling teachers here at the KA currently. Also, school counselors, um, school counseling, that will all be provided. Um, Mrs. Bryan may reach out and branch out depending on you know, what's going on with the workload. But as of right now, um, the goal is to have the school counselors of Norwood and Tinicum to be working with our kindergarten students. All right, so this goes back to the idea of let's think virtually now, okay? So this is a typical day for your child. And I will answer this question right now. Obviously, none of us expected or wanted to be in this place at this time. So if you're a parent and you're like, oh my gosh, I work 8.30 to 2.30, I can't get my kids set up for virtual learning, do not worry about it, okay? These lessons will be recorded by the teacher. And if you're working and you're not, you don't get home till let's say 5.30, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, or somebody is going to not be able to get with, to your child to work with them until then, completely understandable, okay? You will be able to go back and look at those recorded videos. This is much like what we did in the spring. So in the spring, if some of you weren't available, we always had that, we had, at that time, it was Google Classroom, where you could sign on, you could see your, what your kids needed to do that day. So it's very similar to, similar to that in the idea of you work at your own pace, you can go and get those recorded videos at that time. The ideal situation, you know, if you can be, you will have a live teacher every day teaching. Now, what will that look like? So 8.20 to 8.30 would be a check-in with your child's homeroom teacher. Okay, it'd be a morning meeting with your homeroom teacher, about 10 minutes, kind of talk about the day, um, do some social emotional learning. You'll hear a lot of that this year. Um, but kind of, you know, check in with everybody. How are they doing? Um, so that's a brief 10 minutes. You'll have, a, there'll be a message from me. There'll be announcements, birthdays, Pledge of Allegiance, different things such as that. Okay. So that's the beginning of the school day. A normal, again, this is just one sample student. So your child may then have ELA. Now, we're not going to, if you look at this schedule and you said to yourself, they can't be in front of a computer 8.30 to 2.30, we completely agree and we understand that. So if you see up here where it says virtual classes will be held in person for 15 to 30 minutes, a normal time would be that. So I log on, I'm live, I would see my child, I would, your child would see his or her ELA teacher. That ELA teacher will teach, depending on the lesson, 15 to 30 minutes, okay? Now that extra half hour, does my child just sit there? No, there's usually some, you know, the first couple of days, honestly, we're going to get to know your, your child. Some very simple, you know, minor assignments, if you will. Um, but again, it would not be continuous screen time with your child, with your child watching the Zoom. I do want you to know that right now up front. So let's say your child logs off around 9 o'clock. And then at 930, um, we would have, this year we're doing something called a power block. Now, what a power block will be is there's not going to be any live teacher. Um, again, this will, the more information will come out exactly what it will look like. But your power block would be where your child would log on to Schoology and they would have, their different teachers would have activities that your child will work on on a, it's self-paced, okay? So they would work on it for, you know, maybe it's do lesson 1.4 in reading eggs. They would finish that and then they're done reading. Okay, so it's really kind of work at your own pace during that hour, but there will be specific assignments for each child. Okay, now at 1030, they would log back on and you would actually have a live teacher teaching Orton Gillingham phonological awareness. Again, 15 to 30 minute lesson with some follow up activities after that. Obviously, as the year progresses, um, and if you are a, a sync student, or obviously if you're in person, in person, again, I don't want to get into that today, but obviously they're going to be in the classroom that long, but you're looking at the teacher teaching, same thing, 15, 20 minutes, and then the kid's doing different activities for that next half hour. So it's not a teacher up there lecturing for the whole entire time. Lunch, 11.30 to 12.15, you would not be logged on for lunch. I mean, unfortunately, if you can virtually share snacks and you find out how to do that, I would love that because I would log on for lunch for you because I'm always looking for a good snack. Um, but you would turn your camera off. You would log off, eat lunch at your leisure from 1130 to 1215. 
Log back on 1215 to 110. Maybe that's your special. So maybe you have Mr. Mack. Maybe you have PE and health. Okay, so Mr. Mack would be doing a 10, 15, 20-minute lesson. Could be a health lesson, how to eat healthy. Um, and then, again, then after that, there could be a little activity to do after that. Um, again, 115, log back on. This would be a different math. This would now be a math teacher in person. Okay, teacher teaching you math then for, those, for that 20 to 30 minutes and then some activities afterwards. Every day there will be teacher office hours. I do want you to know that. So obviously the teachers will always be open to answer any questions. Teacher office hours in this, let's say your child's you know, struggling with, I don't know, you, you think it's a couple weeks in and you're, you're not feeling confident that they're really picking anything up. Okay, that's the time where you can have an individual Zoom with your child's teacher. If it's a situation where maybe you need a school counselor, Ms. Bryan could always come on, I can come on, um, excuse me, the office hours are kind of where we can reach out and support you as best we can. So for in-person, um, your special will be synchronous. For iSync and iCyber, they will be asynchronous. What does that mean? So if you sign up for your child and you're expecting to be in person that first week in October, um, you will see Mr. McElhenney teaching gym, or you'll see Ms. Killian teaching music at that time, okay? If you're an iSync or iCyber, student and you're that's what you chose for your model all that means is that you will see instead of mr McElhenney live miss killian live you'll actually have a website um, a schoology site where you would actually click on and then you would see that at your own leisure so you would go ahead and participate in the specialist um classes when you get a chance okay all right all right these are some basic ground rooms for zoom I myself have an eight, four, and six year old at home. Um, yeah, I always say eight, six, four. I don't know why I said eight, four, six, and but okay. Anyway, eight, six, and four year old at home. It's it's a tough virtual learning in the Cole have household, to be honest with you. But these are some ground rules. Um, you know, especially if if your child's struggling, some things that they can do. Um, no chat while teacher is talking. Be on time. Um, you know, Zoom from the kitchen or living room. We like that the kids are, you know, in a nice area if you could um be it you know where they're sitting up tall kind of like they would be in school not lying down or anything like that we do ask them for that uh, mute yourself now the child the child's teacher your child's teacher will be able to mute all at times but please know that um you know they are also able to unmute them and talk to them when they need to interact uh, be sure to turn on the video we do hope um that all children will be present on the video however that's not mandatory uh, we said they're being prepared obviously the first week or so it's going to be iron out a lot of kinks um but again once we get going hopefully we catch a we catch a good flow after the couple for the first couple of weeks and then you know we're, we're ready and we're prepared to learn each day uh, we do ask that adult be present if possible um raise your hand to talk there is that function in zoom and obviously always be respectful here at the kindergarten academy we always talk about being respectful responsible and safe please know also um, there will be a PBIS component. So if you have children in other schools or been to kindergarten academy before, the teachers will be implementing. K-Coins will still be a thing, even though it's virtual. Um, so being respectful, responsible, and safe, those things still will be recognized throughout each and every day. All right. So we do have a different, as I mentioned before, is counseling services, social work services. Mrs. Christine Bryan and Ms. Kathy McCollin. Um, at this time, Mrs. Bryan is going to talk a little bit about um, her role here, along with the child study team and what counseling services are available throughout the school year. Again, both virtually and in person. Yeah, hi, I'm so happy that you could join us today. I know that this is, as we've, we've heard a million times, it's unprecedented times and not the idea of how probably you expected your child to start kindergarten and all the feelings that you are feeling um, and the anxious feelings that your child may have are all completely normal. And that's really why I'm here. Um, I'm here to help your child. I'm here to be of assistance to your family if I can. So a little bit about my role in the building is that I provide um, a, a couple of different services. So um, I will be providing kind of whole group classroom 
lessons for guidance. We focus on social emotional learning and, you know, just good development for your child. We talk a lot about feelings and emotional regulation, um, about what it looks like to be respectful, responsible, healthy, and safe. And so I'll do that as a whole group to every child in the kindergarten academy. Um, and of course, virtually. Also, um, I do provide small group counseling throughout the year. The topics vary. Um, typically, I have several groups throughout the year that focus on children that are struggling with anxious behaviors or maybe some emotional regulation. They have trouble settling down. They have trouble going kind of from that zero to 100 and teaching them how to read signals in their body and how to deal with those strong feelings that they might have. Um, in addition to that, things like a grief group, grief and loss, um, and um, a whole host friendship groups, I, I kind of take a lead off of what the students in the building need at different times. And this year, um, I definitely think that, you know, we will have some very anxious kiddos. So that is, again, why, why I am here. Um, I do offer individual counseling on a short-term basis. If I feel or you feel as though your child may need um, additional services, I can help you get outside services for mental health, uh, for your child and things like wraparound service. I can offer a whole host of resources for that. Um, and then finally, we have a child study team here and um, I am the coordinator for the child study team. And that looks at children who are struggling, maybe academically not making the progress that um, a parent is concerned about or the school is concerned about. And we go through that process, which again, we can talk more about as the school year goes on, but you know, we're here to help with that as well. It may be a speech issue, it may be a learning issue, but that all goes through our child study team. Um, and really, like I said, I'm excited to, see all of the kids and have them here. The Kindergarten Academy is a very special place. And if you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out. And if it's for your child or your family. Thank you, Mrs. Bryan. As Mrs. Bryan said, you know, we, we, are, we, we have an open door policy here. Okay, if there's anything that you guys ever need, we're here for your child, we're here for you guys, we're here for your family. Um, you know, we will be more than happy to, if, help you in any way we can um, but again those of you who've worked with us before or you know it's all about the kids here and you know we really want to do everything that's best to help support you um, not only your child but also to help support you as a parent um, you know I think that since March it's been you know it's been tough on the kids it's been tough on the adults please know that Mrs. Bryan and our team here um, we're here to, sp to support your child um, and yourself every step of the way. All right, so I'm just gonna briefly go over um, the calendar. These are just some key points throughout the year. Um, today are our town halls um, on 916th is the pickup of materials. Okay, so if you live in Tinicum and Norwood, it doesn't matter if you're an in-person, you're an iSync or an iCyber student. If you live in Tinicum and Norwood, you will go to the community schools on the 16th, either between nine to 11, one to three or four to six, to pick up all of your materials, okay? If you are a special education student who is attending the Kindergarten Academy, you also will be coming to the Kindergarten Academy. So if you're a Prospect Park, let me say this again. So if you're a Prospect Park resident, doesn't matter if you're in person, iSync or iCyber, a Glen Olden resident, doesn't matter if you're iSync, iCyber or in person, or if you're a special education student, and you are coming here and we've already had that discussion um, and we've had that early intervention um, transition meeting and we've said you're coming near the KA, you also will be picking up your materials here at the Kindergarten Academy. So at September 16th, 9 to 11, 1 to 3 and 4 to 6, in this s'more that was sent out uh, last week, there was some information about this. I will continue to send out more information um, as we get closer to that date. Um, just so we can make it as smooth as possible. Um, we are going to be, it's going to be a drive-by similar to if you've been in the loop before at the kindergarten and we're going to have people on walkie-talkies and they'll be running the materials out to your car. The goal is to have your child's homeroom teacher um, hand you the box so then at least you can have put a name to that face um, and I'm going to talk about that also in a couple in a couple slides from now. 
um, because the goal also is to, um, prior to 916, prior to the 16th, is also this, for your, the teacher to set up a quick Zoom with you, um, just so you can see your teacher's face um, and get to, you know, just to kind of touch base and get to know you guys a little bit prior to the first day of school. So 916 is the pickup of materials. Um, 917, the following day, is the first day of virtual learning, okay? Your child's teacher obviously will be reaching out to you to go over what the schedule will look like for that first day. So do not worry about that. The teachers will be in touch with you about that. Our virtual back to school night will be September 24th from 6 to 7.30. On October 12th and November 3rd, there is no school for students. These are teacher development days. Similar if you had children in the district in the past, um, Thanksgiving week, if you will, November 23rd, 24th, and 25th, there are parent-teacher conferences and there are no school for students. Currently, these are um, set to be virtual conferences. Even if we are back in school, currently the school district is recommending, um, last we spoke, um, virtual parent-teacher conferences. That is TBD. Um, so even if we're back October 5th, you're still looking to do parent-teacher conferences virtually. Similar to past years, uh, November 23rd would be your typical 8 to 3.30 day. November 24th, that Tuesday, would be like a 12 to 7 o'clock type time frame for the for the um, conferences, and November 25th usually is our morning 8 to 12. Obviously, if anything else comes up prior to that, you know, we can always set things up um, you know, to touch base. So do not, you know, those are just the ones that are on the calendar going forward. Uh, Christmas break, the early dismissal for that would be December 23rd, and classes review, resume on January 4th. January 18th is Martin Luther King holiday, new school for students. And then in February, we have President's Day weekend. The 12th and the 15th, there is no school for students. There are both teacher development days. Looking forward to the spring, uh, March 8th and March 9th, we have parent-teacher conferences. There's no school for students that during that those two days. Spring break is March 31st to the 5th of April. Memorial Day, no school for students. June 4th is KA new student orientation. Um, so the kindergarten students your kids, um, they would be off on June 4th because what we do is we have our pre, unfortunately we didn't get to do it this year. We had to do the Google form route, um, but historically they would come in on that day and do a traditional orientation. Our closing ceremonies, your K AKA kindergarten graduations will be scheduled for the 7th, 8th and 9th. And again, ideally, obviously we hope that they will be in person, but if you're an iCyber or iSync, even if you are an iCyber or iSync student, you will still have the opportunity to come in and participate in a closing ceremony if you wish. Um, and if not, obviously, we're going to definitely come up with something similar to what we did last year as far as a virtual closing ceremony for the kindergarten students. And our last day of school is June 11th at 11.50. Attendance. So daily attendance and engagement is expected. Um, a team is available to discuss ways to help with developing strategies to get your child to school. Again, if you've had children in the district before, you understand that attendance is something that we need. Um, consistent, we need consistent attendance. And even though we are virtual, um, you know, we are expecting students to be engaged and attending to task and completing the work as assigned. Obviously, we're not gonna overwhelm them. That is not what we're going to do. Please know that. Um, especially in the beginning of the year, we're just getting to know the kids, okay? We're getting the kids getting used to a virtual setting so we're not gonna, the last thing we're gonna do is overwhelm you guys with work. But we do ask that when your child is present, we do ask that they are engaged, be it virtually, in person, I sync, I cyber, however, whatever their learning model may be. Um, again, a pattern of consistent truancy will lead to a team to discuss solutions. Um, we do have a truancy panel here um, that Superintendent Riley runs, where if truancy continues to be an issue, um, we do bring it in and we try to come up with a solution again, to help you what, what's best for your kid. There's many different factors. We understand anxiety is a factor. That's obviously different conversation on how to best help your child um, versus if there's other situations where, um, you know, it could be a job change or other ways where you're struggling getting the child to school. Please know that the team's here to help get your kid here and engage each and every day. All right. Attendance, do not worry. Last year, I know there was that form. If you remember the Google form that was sent out for child attendance, 
we are working on something that looks a lot easier and different this year. Um, and most likely the teachers will be overseeing that. So do not worry about filling out that form like you did last year. We're looking into something uh, more efficient, if you will. Uh, before I hand it over to Mrs. Hokinson, there were a few questions that were asked. Um, one, if a child has questions during work on your own time, will teachers be available at that specific time slot? Um, the, the answer there is yes. Um, you know, the child will, you know, last we spoke, um, you know, the teacher will be available during that time, um, even if they are logged off. But I also, you know, there is also going to be other ways to get in touch with the teacher. For example, let's say you're doing, um, let's say it's a power block, okay? And there's, there's not going to be any teachers there necessarily overseeing the power block. But if something comes up and you have a question about a reading eggs situation, that's where you would email the teacher and um, the teacher would make time during her office hours to touch base with you. So yes, the teacher will be available. Um, if it's during that specific time slot, that's more of um, a teacher will be able to kind of let you know how that's going to look. But yes, that, you know, the, the teacher will be able to answer, if not exactly at that time, for whatever reason, um, sooner than later during their office hours, but they will make themselves available. If things go back to normal, will it Norwood and Tinicum students go back to the KA? Um, no, unfortunately not. Um, the school board um, plan that was passed, they said no matter what happens for this year, the children will finish out at both Tinicum and Norwood. Um, obviously that has to do with nothing other than uh, spacing. Um, as you know from my communication in the past with you, we're looking at approximately uh, 13 or 14 kids maximum per classroom. And due to that, we just we did not have the capacity to hold that many students this year. Um, the Kindergarten Academy was built to be a kindergarten. Um, and because of that, the classrooms are smaller than be it Glen Old and Norwood or Tinicum. Classrooms are a little bit larger. Um, if, and, you know, in a perfect world, if we had a school with larger classrooms, everyone, you know, ideally would be here. But you know, as per the school board, uh, plan as of today, it was no matter what happens, um, Norwood and Tinicum will complete the years at their community school. All right. At this time, again, you can continue to type in um, questions during the, in the question and answer box. I will continue to um, try to answer them as I will be alive. I might be typing some answers out because um, at this time, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Ms. Noelle Hokinson, who will go into the technology schoology piece of this. This is going to be overwhelming, I'm not going to lie to you, but please know that Mrs. Ho not only Mrs. Hokinson will be there to support you as we get underway for virtual learning, but there's going to be a lot of documents and we're going to make this as user-friendly as possible. This is a learning curve not only for you as parents and for our kindergarten students, but this is brand new for all of our teachers and administrators as well. Um, so we're all kind of learning this together. So please know that we're here to help support you during these during this time. Um, I will answer one, this wasn't a question that came up, but I forgot to say, um, as far as what type of device you will be receiving from the school district, um, the kindergarten students will be receiving Chromebooks, okay? So you'll be receiving a Chromebook on the 16th, along with other materials you're gonna need for reading and math, but also know that the goal is halfway through the school year, we have a back order right now of Chrome tablets, and the goal would be to um, switch over. Right now, it looks like a January start, like January time, but we would look to switch over to these Chrome tablets, if you will. But to start the year, your child will be getting Chromebooks um, to start the year. All right, thank you, Ms. Hokinson. Hi everyone, I'm here to give you some basics of Schoology and like Mr. Cole Hepp said, um, try not to be overwhelmed or frustrated. Um, there are plenty of people that are available to help you work through um, any Schoology issues. Um, I promise that once you start using it with your child, you'll get used to the, the way the site is set up. Um, and it'll become second nature, hopefully, very quickly. Um, so Mr. Ho Mr. Uh, Colehep sent a video in um, 
his newsletter that also walked you through the basics of Schoology. So I do advise that you watch that video as well. Um, and everything that I share with you today, as well as the video tutorial will also be available um, on your child's Schoology page. So once you know how to get in there, you'll have all of your tech support uh, right there as well. And I'll continue to provide video tutorials on pretty much anything that we're expecting your child to do on Schoology um, all throughout the year as we move forward. Okay, so step one is you will get a Chromebook on the 16th. I do advise that when you get pick up your materials on the 16th to go ahead and log in as soon as you get home. Um, try not to wait until the morning of the 17th just so that you know that you can get your child logged in. When you pick up your device, um, you'll also get a um, username and password that they'll use for Google. Generally, their username is their first name dot last name, but it can get complicated if your child has a hyphenated last name or if they have an especially long first and last name. Sometimes uh, their um, logins will be abbreviated, but you will get that um, on the 16th as well. And generally their passwords are the letters ISD and their lunch number, which you have not received their lunch numbers yet because they are new students. Um, so again, you'll receive all that information on the 16th. When you um, turn on your Chromebook, there will be three tabs that appear. One will be an Interborough School District web page. The second will be a tab for ClassLink, which you don't need to worry about ClassLink right away. Um, ClassLink contains apps and materials that um, teachers will be using with your child in the classroom. And once those start to get used, you'll get directed to ClassLink by your child's teacher. The third tab will be a Google sign-in, and that's what you want to click to get into Schoology. Um, you'll choose your child's account, which again will be provided to you on the 16th, um, and then you'll be automatically logged on to Schoology. But you can use the URL interborough.schoology.com on any device. So, if all else fails, you can just open your web browser and type in interborough.schoology.com and that will get you there as well. So once you log in and your child's information is in Schoology, the first page you'll see is called Recent Activity. You can see it circled here in red. Um, that is the default that Schoology uses um, once, you're, once you're logged in. Um, your teacher may choose course dashboard as the de default as well. That just gives you a list of um, your child's courses. But I'll show you what you'll see once you open that recent activities page. So there's a black banner at the top. And all the way to the left, you see the Interboro School District iBox logo. That is your home button on Schoology. So if you ever get lost or you click to a place where you're not sure where you got to, if you just click on that home button, it'll al always take you back to that recent activity page. After the home button, you'll see courses. When you click on that, that takes you to all of your child's courses. And in kindergarten, they will have an Orton-Gillingham course, or OG, which is their reading and phonics course. They'll have a math course. They'll have an ELA course, which will be more reading instruction, and they'll have their specialist course. So whether it's PE or music or later on, it might be science. Um, so those are the courses that you will see when you go to that course page. The next thing you'll see is groups. Groups might be used by your teacher if they have specific reading groups that they want your child to be a part of, or if they're doing groups for differentiated schoolwork. If your child is put into a group, your child's teacher will let you know that. Um, so you don't need to worry about that until your teacher directs to that group section. Resources is a section really more used by older kids when they're writing a term paper. They can store articles and things like that in their own resource section. 
we won't be using that as much in kindergarten. And grades will give you their grades for all of their courses across, across Schoology. And it's still being debated in kindergarten how grades will be utilized. So again, that might be something that you would be using more toward the middle end of the year than right in the first marking period. I don't know if Mr. Cole ha has something to add to that grades. Yeah, not, not at this time. Um, like I said, I mean, we, we kind of want to just get in, get everybody acclimated. Um, you know, grades should not, at, at this time, um, you know, it's the least of our worries, to be honest with you. Uh, we just mm -hmm. want to get the, the, the kids, you know, up and about, learning how to navigate Schoology. Um, so do not worry about assessments at this time. Um, you know, obviously more information will come throughout the year. And as we move on, because, um, you know, there will be, you know, we, do, we still ha will have report cards as normal. Um, it might look a little bit different as far as, you know, but as far as like your ELA, math, you know, those core content areas, you know, we will continue to assess them. Um, but the curriculum office is coming up with ways on how we can best assess students in a virtual manner. Um, also, uh, what was I say? yeah, I mean, that's, you know, like I said, the traditional report card that you've seen in the past will come out and might be modified a bit. For example, if you're an iCyber or iSync student, um, it's going to look different, your characteristics of successful learners. So how does a student, a successful student look on an iCyber or iSync platform? It's going to look a little bit different than an in-person. So that's all stuff we're working on behind the scenes. But please know that they will still receive a report card. Okay, so back to that recent activity page on the right hand side is a place where you'll see reminders, um, items that might be due for your child coming up. So that's just a quick view um, on that right side of that recent activity page, little reminders for you. And then on the right hand side of that black banner, you'll see a search button. That's how you can search people or courses on Schoology. Um, you'll see an apps feature, which is the four little squares. Um, right now, the only app that we have stored there is the Nearpod app, which again is something that we're going to focus on in a few months. That's not going to be um, something that your child has an assignment in in kindergarten right at the start of the year. Right next to that, there's a calendar feature. When you click on the calendar, you can if your teacher has stored things there, um, you'll see upcoming events or items that are due by clicking on their calendar. Next to that, you'll see an envelope. That's how you can message um, your teacher or really anyone on Schoology by using that message feature. Next to the envelope is a bell that gives you any notifications that Schoology has sent. And next to that, you see it says Tinicum test, that's where your child's name will be. Um, if we click on that carrot that is next to your child's name, they can create a profile on Schoology. And um, that's one of the first assignments they'll have from their teacher is to create their own profile. They can, you can help them write a bio about themselves that tells whatever you want the teacher to know about your child, um, a specific way that your child learns, what your child is interested in, to help your child's teacher get to know your child better. You can also edit your profile picture on your page. And again, this will be an assignment that's sent out by your um, child's teacher. So you don't feel like you need to do that right away. You can wait on that. Um, I actually already created a little video tutorial for you to watch so you can be sure that you um, are creating that profile correctly without you know, causing any frustration. Okay, then let's go back to that black bar at the top and this is how your child gets to their courses. So there's two ways that you can find a list of your courses. You can click courses in the black banner and they'll come up in this um, grid view or you can click my courses over to the right underneath your child's name. That will show your courses in a list view. Um, when a child has many courses, they might not all show up on this grid view and you might need to click on that my courses button to get the list view, which will have every course your child is enrolled in. Um, so those are the two different ways that you can find your courses. 
once you've found the course that you are supposed to be working on, it's as simple as just clicking right on that course. And now we're into a course. When you first open your course, everybody will have this banner at the top. It will have the name of the course that you're in. So in our case, for kindergarten, it'll say ELA or music or math. And then you'll have four buttons underneath that banner. Um, these are buttons that can help you find information quickly on your Schoology page. So everybody will have a resource button. Resources will give um, proper etiquette, Zoom rules, and also links to any online resources that your child will be using. So with ELA and OG, you use reading eggs as an online resource, and in math, they use math seeds. We also have some other supplemental online resources such as Pebble Go, which focuses on science and social studies, and um, Starfall, which is just an extra supplement that focuses on all different subjects in kindergarten. So by clicking that resource button, it will take you right to the page that um, you can find the links to all those resources that your child will need to be doing along with their coursework. There'll be a course overview button that will give you a generalized overview of what they'll be doing in that course throughout the year. There'll be a week at a glance button, and this is a very important button for you to know. With the week at a glance, this gives you all of your child's work for the week in one document. So you can see within that course, so if they're in the ELA course, it will tell you they need to, on Monday, complete lesson one, on Tuesday, complete lesson two and three, and so, far in, uh, and so forth um, throughout the week. Um, so that week at a glance is going to be the key for you to know, okay, they completed lesson one, we're good for today, for Monday, let's look forward to what you have to do tomorrow. Also in the week at a glance will be all of your child's Zoom links um, for the week. Very, you'll be able to click right from week at a glance, click right into the Zoom, Zoom links so that you can um, have that right there at your fingertips. So that week at a glance is going to be key for you, making sure that you've got your child to do everything that the teacher wants them to do for that day. And then the final button in the banner is tech support. So this is where I'll be dropping a lot of um, video tutorials um, already in the tech support uh, folder. I have how to log into your device, how to learn about your device. Um, we'll have the Schoology overview video. We'll have this presentation all in that tech support under that tech support button. So that's your go-to if you have any questions about how to do certain things in Schoology. Okay, and then once we're within the course, you'll see to the left, um, the first um, where it says materials, that's going to be where their lessons are on that materials page. Right under materials is updates, that will be where your teacher puts any um, special messages they want you to see. You would click on that updates and that would contain messages and announcements from your teacher. Grades, as Mr. Kohlhepp said, we're still working out, so we're not gonna worry about that. Attendance is happening another way, as Mr. Kohlhepp mentioned before. And then members, if you click on that, that will show you a list of your child's classmates. Um, Nearpod, as I said, is something that we'll be using later on in the year, but not something that we'll start the year out with. So that's what you see on the left side there once you're inside your course. When you scroll down in your course, this is where you will find your child's lessons. So all lessons will be organized by unit first. So you can see here, unit one, unit two, unit three. When you click into those folders, then you'll see a topic, whatever topic is being covered for that week. And then when you click into the topic, that's where you'll find the actual lesson that your child needs to complete. So those um, folders within the course are the key to finding what lessons your child needs to be doing. And then again, there's that message feature um, up at the top on the black banner. So if you have any questions about a lesson, so questions when you're talking about questions about specific components of the lesson, such as, I think 
Johnny was supposed to do page three of the workbook, but does he do page four also? That would be a question for your child's teacher, whoever that ELA, math, or OG teacher or specialist are. And their name will always be at the top in the banner of that course. So you can email that or message that teacher directly right here on Schoology if you have something that's a, about the content of the lesson. Um, if you're having trouble navigating through the page or need tech support, that would be a separate email. So lesson questions go right to the teacher and I have the separate email for you for, for actual tech support. So for tech support, you would email tech help at innerboroughsd.org. So that's where if you're, um, you know, for some reason the login isn't working or the password isn't working or you're having some type of particular technical difficulty, you want to go to that tech help, T E C H H E L P, at innerboroughsd.org. And that's where you can get actual, you know, technical support for that too. And then I am always available. My name is Noelle Hokinson, and you can always um, email me too, and I'm happy to help with whatever you need. So I know that's a lot, as Mr. Colip said, um, but honestly, once you get logged in and you just start clicking around and playing around with the pages, it will start to come really naturally to you. Um, and I think it'll be fine. I think. We just all need to just dive right in and, and get clicking. We'll be okay. That's it for me, Mr. Cole. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Oakinson. I appreciate it. If anybody has specific questions for Schoology, you can always type them down in the Q&A box. Um, mm -hmm. As you, excuse me, I'm pretty sure um, the questions that I have been able to answer, I think I answered all of them as of now, but um, I'll hold on for another minute or so. Um, if anything else comes up. So like I said, the main thing, you know, like I said, if there's a situation where um, you, oh, that's what I, will, I do want to say. So obviously this is a lot, and I don't know about you, I'm somebody that's like, all right, I need a piece of paper that tells me how to do all this stuff. Um, when you pick up your child's device, the tech department has come up with a basically step-by-step -step, um, on how to log into Schoology. All right, so I know this is a lot, you know, obviously that's hopefully nobody took notes. Um, but again, this is recorded, so you can always go back and look at this recording. But also, please know that when you pick up your child's device, the Chromebook, and the other materials that they're gonna need, um, again, there's gonna be a step-by-step -step instructions on how to log on to Schoology. Um, if your child has, so there's a few, if you're, let's say your child is an itinerant special education, let's say they have speech with Ms. McManus, okay, and they only have services for speech, um, you know, Ms. McManus will have, when you log your student on, you will see a speech course um, for that child. So again, if you have, your child has different teachers, they're all going to be in touch with you, but Schoology is kind of our home base as far as where you're going to find um, you know, basically all the assignments and everything else that we're doing virtually. Now, just that being said, when we do go back in person, um, school is still going to be used throughout the year. So as long as it just goes away when we go back in person, um, just know that, um, you know, just know it's going to be like that, use, utilize like that throughout the year. Okay. Uh, Question is, will hack login answer the Schoology log and the Schoology login be the same? Will I get that info when I pick up on the 16th? Noel, they're different, correct? Hack and Schoology, hack and Schoology are completely different. I believe so. Yes. So the question is, will hack your home access center login and the Schoology login, they will not be the same, but just like you're getting that sheet with um, the Schoology login, you also will get a sheet with on how to log in for hack. To be honest with you, hack um, in kindergarten, we don't utilize it as much as be at the middle school or the high school where you constantly get the updates on grades and things such as that. Um, here, like I said, we like to kind of be more 
on a parochial level, if you will, um, where, you know, in the beginning of the year, obviously you're going to have, your child's going to have a schedule. As I mentioned before, like, all right, this is when I have to sign in for ELA. This is when I have to sign up for math or log in, I'm sorry, via Zoom. All that's going to happen, and obviously you're going to follow your child's schedule that way. Um, but as far as hack goes, um, it's not really utilized at the kindergarten academy. But like I said, that being said, you will receive a paper on how to log in because you absolutely will need that down the road. People lose those sheets all the time. Do not worry about that either. But just know that you will get a sheet on how to log in for hack uh, when you do start. You will, um, for those of you who've had me in the past, I do like to send home uh, Sunday morning messages. I will continue to do that. Uh, should be beginning this week. Kind of just give you an update as far as, you know, what to expect this week. Um, we've also, the school district, if you have any children, if you have children um, in Prospect Park School, I know they like to utilize the S'more newsletter. Um, we started doing that once we closed down in March last year. So you will hear basically two messages each week. They will, well, they better be the same messages because they're from me. Um, basically just talking about what to look, what's going on, what to look forward for in the week. Um, and that will be both S'more being sent out electronically and you'll also hear my voice on Sunday morning. Um, I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds or so, um, but I just, you know, I wanna echo what Superintendent Riley and you know, what Ms. Ovitz and Mrs. Bryan said, we're all in this together. Um, we're all learning together. Um, you know, we're here every step of the way to help you through um, virtual learning. Do not, do not be concerned. If right now going through your head, like my child will not be able to sit in front of a computer for more than 10 minutes. We understand that. And that's why we're here. And we're going to work through that and know your child's not going to get held back because they can't sit in front of a computer, right? That's nonsense. Just know that we're here to help you. Your teacher's child's here to help you. Um, myself, as I mentioned earlier, have an eight, six and four year old who went through virtual learning last spring. It's tough. I'm not, it, it's definitely tough, but please know that we're all in this together and we're all going to. And we're going to get through it together. Um, obviously, once we get back more to more in-person learning, I will set something up to talk more about um, what arrival and dismissal will look like. Um, you know, all those questions, please hold them for a, for a later time. But, um, you know, we'll definitely have them up and going from there. All right. Is Zoom used for teachers' lessons? Yes. So the teachers will be sending out Zoom links, um, and it would just be like a recurring Zoom link. So let's say um, – Mrs. Spiata is your Orton-Gillingham teacher, if you will. Um, you will get a recurring Zoom. Let's say you have that at 9.30 every week. Um, you'll click on that link every day, and you'll see Mrs. Spiata, and she'll be there teaching you. Um, and that's really the same for iSync or um, virtual going forward. iCyber, those of you will have just Mrs. Wolchensky. It's going to look a little bit different. Mrs. Spolchensky will be in touch with you uh, sooner than later. And like I mentioned, the goal is for prior to the week of September 14th, where you'll be picking up devices, um, we are setting, the teachers are currently um, working on setting up just kind of like a very casual meet and greet, um, just so you can kind of touch base prior to the 16th, where hopefully you'll be able to see them in person when you pick up your devices. All right. So like I mentioned, uh, we do have, so if you have a spouse or somebody who wants to um, hop on, we do have another, it's going to be the same presentation, but um, if you want to hop on later tonight at seven o'clock, um, you would just go back to the s'more that was sent out and click to register for tonight's session. Um, but also, like I said, this has been recorded and it will be uploaded. Um, it will be uploaded eventually to the school district's YouTube site. Once I have that, I will send it out to everybody. Question, if I live around the corner, is it okay to walk to pick it up? You will abs you're absolutely more than welcome to come walk. Um, just know, obviously, we'll be following social distancing measures. Um, the only thing, yeah, actually, that, that's perfectly fine. The box might be a little bit heavy, um, but you should be able to do it. There are handles, they're like the banker file boxes, if you've seen them. So, yeah, you're more than welcome for anybody that lives in Prospect Park or anybody wants to go for a nice walk. You're more than welcome to walk. This when you come up. We'll do some, you know, we'll be social distancing, obviously, 
Um, and we'll also, you know, if there's a few people that are walking off at the same time, we just ask that you be patient while we get you your supplies, but absolutely. Sounds like a good idea. Um, all right. So like I said, you'll be hearing from me via phone call Sunday morning. Um, I'll also be sending out things just to give you an update. Um, your child's teacher information uh, for them, they will, like I said, they should be reaching out to you in the, in the next couple of days as far as set, setting up a meeting greet. If you have any other questions that pop into your head after this meeting, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to either you know, give me a call. The ladies in the office are more than happy to help you. Um, or if it's something like, you know, more specific that I need to answer, I'm more than happy to either shoot me an email, um, give me a call, whatever else we can do. All right. But thank you so much for taking the time for our kindergarten orientation. Trust me, I wish you were here and the kids were running around the hallways, but uh, you know, here we are and trust me, we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make the best we can for your child this year. So thank you so much. Like I said, we do have another one coming up at seven. Um, I thought you wanna sift through this again, but in case, uh, like I said, somebody else feels like um, somebody else that might be working with your child, maybe it's your, uh, you know, maybe it's your mother-in-law, your aunt, uncle that might be working with your child, it might be worthwhile, or at least have them watch the recording from today. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you.